Today we're going to talk about this uh, thing that I found at work in the dumpster. Uh, I work in an office park and it's amazing the things that people throw away and monitors and computers there and you just never know what people are throwing away. So anyway I found this in the trash. I was actually throwing some trash away and it looks like they were working on a building and I saw this in here and, and what this is, this is an APC Backups Model 550 and it's a battery backup for your computer system or peripherals and other devices and but it's not working so we're going to try to figure out what the problem is hey free is always good right so i'll be back in a moment okay so anyway like i said i found this in the dumpster and i'm going to zoom out here a little bit now you can get a little better look at it here. And anyway, so yeah, it's uh, it's pretty heavy. Uh, it's got a uh, lead acid battery in it, and it is 12 volt. But anyway, so we're going to try to do some diagnostics on this to find out what the issue is. And so I'll show you what it does. And it's going to be kind of annoying here. So let me plug this in. Okay, so when you first plug these in, uh, you're supposed to let them charge for like about 16 hours to get the battery pack all charged up on it. And I'm gonna zoom in here. And you can see this is the power button there. And these are the, the lights. So when you first plug this in and you hit the power button, it's going through some diagnostics here. So if everything is okay, that should be a solid green. But what's happening is we're getting an alarm and it's a fluctuating between the green and the red. And so normally that would tell you that there's an issue with the battery or something else. This has a circuit breaker protection. It's still engaged and we're not getting any battery miswiring or anything. It's, it's all good. And this uh, particular model actually is if you have the software and you have a PC, you plug it into here and you plug it into the USB port on your PC and you can actually program this thing. You can do diagnostic. You can actually even turn that annoying buzzer off too. And I might try that if I can't figure out what's wrong with it, um, but I'm not sure what version of Windows you have to run. All my, the one I have just has Windows 7 on it because that's the one that I like when I occasionally use it. But as you know, I'm a Mac user. I love my Macs. And anyway, so yeah, so we're going to do a little diagnostics here. So um, these plugs here, these are the ones that are all on the battery backup. And these plugs down here are just your regular surge protected plugs. So regardless of the battery, when this is plugged into the, the line voltage, uh, that works whether that button's off or on. These, these are hot all the time. And these are your surge protectors. Then you have your uh, Ethernet port, and you have your uh, Ethernet out. And then you know, this is for the uh, data in for that uh, particular program that you can run on this to check and do run the diagnostics on it. So anyway, I don't really know how old this thing is. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart here. And what we're going to do is we want to check the battery first. Okay. Now it's really easy to get the battery out. Um, you just push this and that access cover pops out. And I went online, you can get these batteries, they're on like 19 bucks. Uh, and that includes the shipping, so it's, it's well worth fixing it, that's all it is. So anyway, to get the battery out, um, you'll see the two plugs here. And we're gonna just kinda lean it forward here. And then you got your hot and negative here. So let's do that. These are just uh, spade connectors. Okay, and plugs pretty easy. And there's your battery. And like I said, this is a lead acid battery. Uh, it's 12 volt. Uh, has uh, was it, 8 amp, I believe. And you actually can get lithium replacements for these things too, but they're pretty pricey. But I wonder how the performance would be on those kind of curious. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to check this battery and make sure that it's good. 
Okay, because when I got it, I just plugged it in at work and I let it charge. And then when I push that power button, then that's when I get that alarm. So I really haven't had time to play with this thing. So let's uh, move this out of the way here. And here's the battery. Here's the, the red terminal, the ground. So let's get our meter here and find out uh, if we have any voltage on this thing. And I'll put that meter right there so you can see it. Here, you can't see the battery here. Hold on. Uh, hold on just a second here. Let me, uh, here, let's do it like this. I'll put the battery right there, and I'll do it this way. So let's see, that's... Look at that. This battery's got a full charge on it. So the battery's charged up, so there's nothing wrong with the battery. And how we're going to prove that is I'm going to get my giant battery charger out, and I'm going to see what, it's, what it says. So let me uh, go grab it here. Okay, so I got I got my camera on my uh, giant battery charger here. This thing's pretty dirty, okay, so I'm a little embarrassed to show this to you. But anyway, um, red obviously means it would be no good or it needs a charge. Yellow means it's in the 12 volt range, and of course green's a little bit higher than that. So let's uh, find out, um, and you can see it there. So we want to at least be in the yellow or the green, so let's find out. Now, like I said, I put the meter on it. We're still reading almost about 13 volts. So this is going to load it down a little bit. So I'm going to have to uh, kind of do this a certain way here so I can make a connection here without shorting it out here. So let's see what we get here. So it's in the red there, it's kind of interesting, on the load. So maybe it is the battery. So the way to tell me if it's the battery or not is I will try to put a power source to this uh, charger. And let me think how I'm going to do that. So give me a minute here. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is I have a uh, little Stanley battery charger. It's a little electronic battery charger. It does output 12 volts. And I want to see what, my, what I want to do is I'm going to put some alligator clips on here, put it on in this, and then turn that on and see if I still get that battery error because it'll be supplying power. It should think it's a battery. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, it might not work. But anyway, I'm just trying to diagnose this a little bit to see. Because like I said, that battery shows fine on the meter. I put it on a big battery charger, and it's still in, it's in the red because there's a load on it. So that kind of tells me it is the battery. But if this works using this method, then that will tell me absolutely that it is the battery. So let's get this uh, hooked up here. Battery charger here. There we go, and I've got the red lead on there. Uh, I'll put the black lead on it. It says it's charging right there. It says it's charging, so let's see what happens here now. <laughs> This is a UL nightmare here, so let me find out here what we can do here without having a bunch of sparks here. Okay, so we are making connection here. So let's just see what this does. This is plugged in, and let's see what happens here. It's going through the diagnostics here. Let's just see if we get that error. Float charging. Huh, look at that. It passed. Let's see here. Now how we're going to determine that, we'll plug something in here to see if these outlets are working. Let's find out here. Let's, uh, actually, let me plug a light into it here. It's going to get dark here just for a second. Let's see if those outlets are working. Let's see. Oh, it's not working. Let's try it again here. 
Let's do it again. Now I hear that relay clicking in there. Now it's alarming. See, it's working. So, hmm, interesting. See, it, where that battery is flashing on there. Bad battery. So, that would lead me to believe that it is the battery. Turn this on a turbo here. See what happens. It's on turbo charge. Let's see. It's still powering it, so it is the light's still working on the battery backup because it wouldn't do that before. So that tells me that it is the battery. So let's unplug this thing here before we cause catastrophic damage here. And I will show you what happens here when we put the battery back in it here. There we go. And also what I wanted to do is I just wanted to make sure that I'm, I am getting the output on this uh, 12 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on. See if I am getting an output. And you can see I am getting 12 volts here. I'm actually I'm getting like 13.69. So I am getting an output on this. So we know we're getting an output. So we know that confirms that there's an issue with the battery. All right, guys. So I put the battery back in it. Push that. We'll let it go through the diagnostics again. and it's getting that alarm. And if we plug the light in here, it's, it's getting the power off the, the line here, but when that diagnostic is clear, it would actually be running off the battery backup. Okay, and we're getting the alarm, so if I hit that, it cuts it off. This side stays hot all the time here, because these are the regular surge protected outlets here. These are the ones that are all pertaining to the battery. So, in conclusion, I guess the battery is bad. So now with the light back on here. Okay, so there you have it. So I'm 99% sure it is the battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to order a battery online. And like I said, I can get the exact replacement here for 19 bucks, including shipping. It comes from California, actually, so I'll get it in a few days. Um, I'll probably order it in the next couple of days. And then, this will be a two-parter video. So this is before we get that new battery. So when we get the new battery, we'll plug it in, and we'll cross our fingers here. Hopefully uh, it works. But it looks to me like it is the battery. Uh, when you put a load on it, it doesn't... Um, it goes way down using that big battery charger because that's got a load on it. But when there's no load, it shows there's 12 volts on it. So that tells me that there is an issue inside the battery. So, so this is going to be a two-parter video. Um, we'll get the battery for it. I'll get it ordered. And then we'll uh, do a video putting the new battery in and making sure it works. But this will be a nice little accessory i like to plug my main mac into it um you know with um out here in california we've really had a lot of bad wildfires this last two three four five years pretty consecutively unfortunately and it looks like this winter is going to be a drier one although we do have some weather coming in uh tonight and tomorrow hopefully all over the country everybody's getting nasty winter weather but here in California, unfortunately, we'll get like maybe just a little bit of rain for a couple hours and it's beautiful for the next. Now, it does get very, very cold at night here. You know, it gets down to the 30s um, here in Northern California, here where I live here in Sutter Creek. And we're in the foothills. 
but if you go up higher in the mountains, and of course, then it gets down to 20s and, and teens. But anyway, we're not getting any snow and we're not getting any rain. So hopefully that will change. But anyway, needless to say, wildfires start up. Uh, PG&E will cut your power off. Even if you're in the city, they'll cut your power off. It doesn't make any sense, but anyway, they do that. And so we do have a generator, backup generator. We can run certain things with it. We can't run the whole house, but you know we can run our TV, internet, and all that stuff. Just the essentials, refrigerator, microwave, that kind of thing. But this would be a nice little thing to have on the computer. I used to have one of these when we had our business years ago, and, and believe me, it paid for itself several times. But anyway, yeah, so this is a nice freebie. It's definitely worth fixing, because these go for about 100, 100 and, 120 bucks brand new online. Um, Sometimes you can get a little better deal than I've seen, like $99 for a brand new one in a box. But like I said, this one's kind of neat because if you have the ability, you could hook it up to a PC um, with some software. Unfortunately, they don't make a version of it for the Mac. I've looked, I've tried to find it, but the only thing I've ever seen is they make it just for PC. And I'm not sure if my Windows 7 will uh, be compatible with that. It'd be kind of neat to, to do that. It looks like it's just like a regular um, printer. USB cable, so it looks like. I got tons of cables, I'll find one to, to try it out and see what we can do. Just thought you guys would like to see this nice little dumpster find. You never know. D diving into dumpster can pay off. Not that I recommend it, but anyway, where I work, uh, like I said, people just are always throwing stuff away. All of us computer users and tech users, we like free things, and this is a nice freebie. So anyway, uh, yeah. So appreciate it if you like this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe and click the bell. And we're also on MeWe and Twitter. You can look me up there on either MeWe or Twitter. You can reach out to me on that. And on that note, you guys have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.